My name is Erwin Mendelssohn. I work for the World Economic Forum out of our New York offices and I'm part of the Global Leadership Fellows Program. I'm Ramya Krishnaswamy. I'm a project manager at the Environmental Initiatives of the World Economic Forum. I am Buspa Wong Napapesan. I'm heading the renewable energy industry sector at the Forum. My name is Arthur Wasuna. I live in Geneva, Switzerland. I'm with the World Economic Forum Global Leadership Program. I just arrived at the Earth Institute at Columbia University. I'm looking forward to an intense week. You're having an experience this week which is non-duplicable. It just can't normally happen that a, a major research university in uh, some of its most important components is going to turn itself out for you and try to get as much of what it's about into your heads before you leave uh, Saturday. We're putting on a program for the World Economic Forum Fellows that is training them to address issues of complexity and sustainable development. I think one of the reasons that a week like this is really important is we're really very good at a university at creating knowledge. We're less good about making sure that it's used in the places where it has to be used to make a difference. And so I think that if we pull that off, if we can get a group of really talented young people from all over the world to say, aha, I get it, I see what the issues are, and then they go off and implement that and put it into practice, then we will have realized our purpose. Global Leadership Fellows are young academics with some years of experience that come to the World Economic Forum in important positions, responsible as community managers or as heads of important global initiatives. And what we do is we train them in parallel to their job as future global leaders, while the fellows may have many advanced degrees, this intensive week is really requiring them to take a very quick dive into some very complex issues and is really challenging them. It's challenging them and as much as they may have economics backgrounds, they may have law backgrounds, but when you're requiring to learn about the hydrological system and the complexities of the climate cycle, uh, we're, we're using a different part of their brain. Good morning, everyone. So we started the week with a lecture about cross-disciplinary cooperation, which really helped to set the tone. Are you familiar with the term wicked problems? A wicked problem is a problem for which there is no formulation or definitive, unambiguous solution. All the problems that uh, we started looking at this week, they were all wicked problems because they were highly interconnected and complex in nature. To solve one issue, you have to look at it in the context of a number of other issues. Wicked problems can only be solved when we bring together people of various disciplines and various stakeholders. Fundamental to the approach of the World Economic Forum is thinking about things in a multi-stakeholder and a multidisciplinary way. So to be here at the Earth Institute where part of the approach is inherently to think about things in a cross-disciplinary way and to marry the science with the policy and engaging the right stakeholders to help to implement some of the recommendations. I think there's a certain harmony between the two. We went up to the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, which is north of the city, and had a chance to see firsthand some of the research facilities. Essentially, it's like a collection of laboratories all interested in Earth systems in some way. We were at the tree ring lab, where a scientist actually dug to the core of a tree using a tool and helped us extract a little section of the tree, and he explained to us how an aging of the tree could hold great clues to how climate patterns have evolved. And we continue to talk about how, by collecting samples from around the world, we could find major clues to climate variability and, and climate patterns uh, over the past hundreds of years. So it's extremely interesting uh, being able to visualize uh, the importance of the scientific information with something as practical as that exercise. There's a harmony around learning about the earth and being in a forest space such as this and, and, and the greenness of it and what happens here that allows the contextualization of what it is that we're trying to do. And I hope we'll have a lasting effect on malaria. In the health exercise was one of the highlights of the program. We split into four groups in multidisciplinary teams to explore what our response would be to the outbreak of malaria and that link of that to climate change. We got to be in the shoes of people who we create a network for most of the time, the constituents we serve, and had that feeling of, oh, this is how we make policy. Oh, this is how we bring together experts to come to a better answer. It was a fantastic year of submissions. <laughs> the faculty who were leading it took on the role of the funders and evaluated at the end the different proposals and awarded the winning one $50 million of hypothetical money. I think we were able to really learn from how they made their decision, how funders actually look at projects and what makes things effective. 
My favorite activity is to go to the labs. We are trying to design materials that can absorb CO2. One of the professors showed us a technique to capture carbon. We see this experiment. We see the technology itself. It is a brush that actually absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere. And then once it gets wet, it actually releases CO2. And he demonstrated to us how levels of carbon dioxide went down when this absorptive material captured atmospheric carbon dioxide. And it was really cool and exciting for me, coming from the business sector, to realize what could be the implications of this technology. I think if the technology can be scaled up uh, commercially, um, it will bring huge benefits uh, in solving the CO2 issue. At the forum, uh, we work a lot to actually create awareness on the technology that he talked about, which is carbon capture and sequestration. So I'm really glad to have met Professor Lechner, and I would love to find a way to involve him in the work that we do, and to see what extent we can help him leverage our network to bring awareness to this challenge and to this technology. The success of the spread of economic development, which is the great positive that we all worked for over the past 30 years, is showing up so powerfully right now on environmental, climate, water, energy, uh, and other physical dimensions that that's the other place where we could have our success carry us right over the cliff. It was great to hear Jeffrey Sachs talk firsthand, just to hear some of his ideas and really get a better sense of his vision for the Earth Institute. One of the key learning that I learned from him is that I think the business sector has a very important role to play in solving the world's problem. For me, what was of particular interest was listening to Professor Sachs talk about the role that the World Economic Forum can play and should play in being the connector or nexus between policymakers and the business community. So this is called Tangible Earth the world's first interactive digital globe. The Tangible Earth presentation was one of the most inspiring activities for me. Professor was able to point to a certain part of the globe, and from there on the screen one could see visually what was going on there and how that changed both over time as well as across geographies to different parts of the world. Someone has developed a powerful way to allow us to visualize very complex things like climate variations or bird migrations or population densities. And the reason why visualization is so powerful is that everything that was a climate model before suddenly became a live animation and our ability to comprehend the, the nature of the problem has completely changed. So the fact that the professor who developed this simplified a very complex problem inspired me very, very much. When discussing our medium-term strategy, there's a couple of things we want to focus on. So our final activity was a project around the redevelopment of a certain part of Haiti and doing that through the lens of a practical problem where it's not only economic development and social development, but climate especially and the environmental landscape. The Haiti case has multiple challenges that need to be tackled from multiple angles. So if I have to form a team, I need to look at different expertise, different um, experience, and I have to use different approaches. We formed groups of four with each individual having a different background and expertise to bring to the discussion. And what we try to do is look at some of the short-term, medium-term, and then the long-term goals that we'd want to think about if we were advising on the implementation of the program. For us, it was interesting because it gave us the opportunity not only to apply some of the domain expertise that we learn, but to do it in a way that synthesizes what we've had a chance to learn throughout the week. My week really exceeded my expectations. To hear from experts with the cutting edge of applying the science around each of these different disciplines to practical policy issues is both fascinating as well as extremely relevant. One of the biggest things I got out of this week is having a chance to get a foundational academic grounding in a number of different topics that I've been working with but have never really been exposed to from a science perspective. So I feel my understanding of the different policy issues is much deeper because of my understanding of the science and I also feel my sophistication in being able to make connections between one discipline and another is that much deeper as a result of having been through this. There are a lot of experts and practitioners I met during this week who I really hope to continue to stay in touch with and bring them to be a part of the work that I do at the World Economic Forum. It's been an intense but also very inspirational week and uh, a week of many, many takeaways for each one of us and definitely a week that we want to continue to take into our careers going forward.